Today I'd like to show you how I converted this white IKEA table into a sort of rack type equipment. At least now it accepts Cisco switches and also I will most probably put in a virtualization server into this rack. So then it can serve as a full CCNA or CCMP up to you rack. In addition to this IKEA table, I also put in some wheels, which again makes the thing move really easily. So now, uh, using these metallic handles, also I can make the whole thing a lot stiffer, so it's really sturdy put together. Furthermore, I can now do this, which I could not do earlier. As you can see, there is plenty of space on the back side, so one can put in a full 19 inch server chassis, absolutely no problem. So then let's get on with the build. Regarding the list of materials what I purchased, I got a white 55 x 55 cm IKEA leg rack. You're gonna see the part numbers in the steer pictures as well. In addition to this, I got two of these uh, wheels. Actually, in a package you get only two of them. This is why I got two of these packages. Then also I got this uh, set of screws and screw anchors. Sorry for my ignorance. In most portion of the video I will be referring to these plastic screw anchors as Dübe, which is the German name. I, I haven't looked it up in advance. You're gonna also need a measuring tape. Of course I got mine from IKEA just as the others. Then you're gonna need a permanent marker to make marks on the table itself. Also you're gonna need a small piece of card box with square edges. I'm gonna use this to make a small measuring device out of it. To get on with the build, then of course unpack first of all your IKEA leg rack table. Then next take this small piece of cardboard with the square edges then align it on the table's corners as good as you can. Once you have aligned this card box on the edges of the table, then hold it down somehow that it doesn't move. Then take some sticky tape and tape it to the table so it doesn't move while we are working with the measuring tape. Next then take the measuring tape and then measure from the edge of the table one and a half centimeters on different points. Just mark them with the marker in both two directions. I will show you in a moment what I mean. So these row of dots here as I told you, it's one and a half centimeters from the edge of the table. And also this row of dots here is one and a half centimeter from this edge of the table. So by connecting the dots, of course, we're gonna get two straight lines. Here then you see these dots being connected, getting the two straight lines, which are then intersect here. Next, we're gonna cut out this piece here and we're gonna use the remaining L shape to use it as a sort of quick measuring device so that we have an easier time when we try to align then these wheels on the table. Here is then this L shape measuring piece of card box with 90 degree angles and one and a half centimeters times one and a half centimeter edges. And this is just the piece which we cut out. We can throw this away. Putting this wheel on the very edge of the table is again not really a good alternative because now if you drill a hole here and there and also there, then this thing again will just break because you are very close to the edge. And this is then why I'm practically shifting everything that's uh, one and a half centimeters so then I can use now that cardboard just align it with the table's edge and with the corner and just take now the wheel then put it in here and now I know that this is completely nicely aligned 
and the drill hole should not be hitting the other drill hole where the leg is then being screwed on. Now I can take my marker, hold this thing down and just make marks on the four holes where I need to drill. X marks the spot where we're gonna then drill into this material. Again, keep in mind that this thing here is nearly hollow. Only here in the corners there is a little bit of uh, compressed wood. The rest of it is completely empty and hollow. And the same is true for the legs as well. So only here in the end you have a little bit of wood. But here inside it's again entirely hollow. We cannot just use simple screws to drill a small hole and just screw it in because the screw will just fall out in a couple of minutes. This is why I'm gonna actually use this uh, plastic, I mean in German it's called Dübel. I think uh, in English it's like a screw for wall, wall screw, I don't know, I haven't looked it up on Google, sorry for that. So anyway, this here is then the 31 centimeter version and that is because the whole thing here is 5 centimeters and if we would take a lot longer one then we would be risking it you know drilling out on the other side I mean I don't wanna do that that would just look ugly plus the equipment will no longer go in and then as screws I'm gonna take this flat ending screw which is uh, 30 millimeter long so by the way this is then the smallest screw from this IKEA set again, so this 0169249. So this is the uh, this Dübel, and this is the screw what I'm using here. I have also, of course, checked, and the diameter of this plastic. Well, I have to refer to it as Dübel. I'm sorry. So this plastic thingy is actually fine. So you can nicely push it through on the holes of this wheel and then once you screw it down this gonna hold these wheels really tight down. And the next drill the holes here. The diameter of this Dübel is then 5 millimeters. So it means that we're gonna have to use a 5 millimeter drill bit. And actually at the beginning I prefer to drill a small pilot hole so I'm gonna use probably a three millimeter drill bit even though this material this wood or whatever it is it's a composite wood it's really soft nevertheless I prefer to drill a pilot hole and then next I'm gonna use the five millimeter drill bit to make the holes for this uh, plastic. Whenever you are operating power tools like this one you should definitely use some minimal safety precautions. So I'm using some safety goggles and some safety gloves. And in my view, this is a must have whenever you are dealing with power tools. It's a good idea to use this adjustable thing on the side of your power drill if you have one. So practically you can take this, by the way, in the meantime I looked it up, it's a screw anchor in English, so it's not Dübel. Uh, anyway, so you can then put it here and you can align it with the drill tip such that the drill tip is about two millimeters deeper than the plastic thing itself. And this way then when you drill, then this will stop the drill going too deep into the material and since this is a hollow kind of wood cardbox thingy you can easily drill through the whole thing. Here are now the final 5 millimeter holes drilled. So now it is time then to install these wheels or castors wherever you want to call them. So I just align it with the holes. I take then my screw anchors and then you can at the beginning you can push them in with your hand and they're gonna get a bit more tight 
then you just hit them a couple of times with a hammer to drive it into this uh, wood or yeah, composite material. I would not really call it wood. After you have installed all these uh, screw anchors, then of course you can put in the screws. Nice, so I got all the screws screwed in. I turned it around, took it around the block, you know, this uh, square skateboard and everyone was like, cool man, that, that is like the stuff. In addition to that, also as a nice feature, I got even an emergency brake on this uh, skateboard, so it even makes it more awesome. On a serious note though, this was the reason why I bought these larger diameter, more expensive wheels, because they come with these blockers. So then you can be sure that your Cisco lab is not just rolling away from you once you then push down these things with your leg. Next then it is time to flip the whole thing over and then install these four screws what you got with your IKEA leg rack table. And then you first you just screw it in here. It's good to use a plier, by the way I found it really useful. And uh, once you have this screwed in until this point here, then it is time to screw in the actual leg in the remaining portion. Now it's then time to screw on the leg. Once you have put in two of the legs, you should definitely put in also some rack mount equipment in order to actually align the legs. Because I will tell you, in my case, at least these uh, Cisco 3750Gs, they are really a tight fit. So you really need to take care that the legs are in the right angle, being rotated completely parallel with the rack mount equipment. When I'm talking about tight fit, I mean that normally, as an example, you would need to screw in here the rack mount ears plus these switches are really so tight in there that I just don't need to do anything. So they are sitting properly in this uh, leg rack table. It's apparently an IKEA optimization for 19 inch Cisco switches. Once you have enough rack mount equipment between the legs, and of course I'm referring to the legs of the IKEA table, so once you have that and you have aligned the legs properly parallel with the equipment, then it's time to install then these metal handles, which are actually having the same length like the distance between the legs. To install these metal stiffener handles, I found that the best procedure was that you first drill 3 mm holes on one of the legs in the top, because this is here not hollow. Then you screw on one side of this uh, handle. Then, because these screws exactly fit nicely in the 3 mm hole, then you actually pull about 2 or 3 mm on the other leg. Then you mark them with a permanent marker, drill the, those holes as well then fix them with screws and then this thing will be rock solid. After we have them wired it up really really nicely and very carefully that there is uh, no layer 2 loop or actually I just maximized the layer 2 loops, I think it's time to do its first power up test and let's see what it is doing. As expected the spanning tree protocol gonna block of course these redundant links this is why you see half of them should be now amber or yellow as you prefer. Of course, that's kind of boring, so let's see whether we can do something about it. So then I think it's time to do something naughty with that poor switch. Then here we go. Mm -hmm. We got some interfaces. Very nice. Now I'm gonna just put all the interfaces in the one VLAN of course. First of all let me make sure that they are all set as axes. And now the really really naughty part of course is that we gonna then turn off spanning tree. Oh yeah, 
they sh- they should they should definitely do some more fun. Yeah, I think this definitely looks better. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs>